Hi, um, this is not a regular Maya Star video. Uh, this is a video uh, about an idea I had that I'm trying to get out there. I, I have this video or a similar video up on my other channel for Genie Voice Command, but there's very few subscribers and it's just not getting any views. And um, I know my Kathy Foyle that channel has a couple hundred subscribers so that you know I thought why don't I put it up on that channel more people are going to see it um, first let me say I'm not a scientist I'm not a doctor I'm not an engineer do not try this at home this is just all theoretical just an idea I had that I'm trying to get out there hoping that the right people see the idea and maybe it's a good idea and they can work off of it or maybe just get them thinking in a different in a different way um, this video is for a reusable mask that will prevent the wear from getting the virus or uh, giving the virus to somebody else if they actually have the virus so um, for well over a week now I've been trying to come up with different ways of killing the virus um, and first I tried, I was thinking UV lights, but there's a lot of problems with UV lights. One, you have to carry a battery around with you if the lights get a short or something and turn off and you don't know they're off, you're left vulnerable. So yeah, UV lights are not, I don't think would be a very good uh, way to do it. Um, so I came up with other, other uh, possibilities, or this is the other possibility, which is a combination of things. Okay, so I'm going to get into it real quick and go over over it. So this is this is for a mask. This doesn't represent a human head. It represents um, it represents a mask, a full face mask. Now this is a snorkel mask for snorkeling. Um, and I was thinking we could even modify some of these snorkel masks. Uh, to work you know you just need to add a filter to it and so um, but this covers the whole face covers the eyes so you don't get any virus in your eyes and it covers the 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 mouth and the nose but it's not like a regulator like a like a, a regular snorkel that goes into your mouth so this would be more comfortable to wear and you can breathe normally through your nose and through your mouth Okay, so that's what this represents here. Okay, so how how my system that I'm working on right now theoretically could work is that you have two cylinders, you know, or two uh, containers. The bottom container contains water, but it also contains citric acid. Citric acid is known to kill viruses. Uh, if you go on a website, you can find that citric acid is used as an ingredient in some of the uh, approved uh, items for killing the current virus. So I'm not saying the virus's name because I don't know if uh, YouTube's going to censor the channel. Um, so it has citric acid in it. It's water with citric acid in it, um, but it also has salt. So I would say, you know, you add some citric acid to the water and then you uh, add a bunch of salt, a bunch of salt to the point where it is super saturated. You know, uh, super saturated solutions, um, what that means is there's so much salt in the water that it can't dissolve any more salt. So the salt would just lay on the bottom. That's how you know when uh, water has been saturated with salt is that there's so much salt in it that it won't dissolve any more salt and it just sits on the bottom uh, of the jar or the glass or the canister so that we have like I said a combination of citric acid water and salt and now citric acid will not react chemically with the salt so you can add the two together they're not going to cause any sort of uh, reaction okay so that's the first filter. The second filter is up here. And the second filter, 
you know, uh, the air comes in here, goes through the water, gets broken up into smaller bubbles, and then above the surface of the water, you might get some water droplets. And those water droplets might contain the virus if the salt or the, the citric acid doesn't kill the virus. Salt is known for killing viruses. I don't know if salt in the liquid will be enough to kill the virus, uh, but I do know, and I'll put links in, in the description, that um, dry salt, when a virus that is contained in a droplet of water, such as from a sneeze or a cough, lands on dry salt, um, as the water is drying, you know, it will melt part of the salt and it becomes progressively more and more salty as more and more of the, the liquid dissolves. And they don't, from what I could read, I just, it, it, I think they weren't quite sure if it was the saltiness of the water as it got more and more salty killed the virus, or if it was the, the salt recrystallizing as it was drying and that it was the recrystallization process that ended up, ended up killing the virus. Um, but either way, um, you have holes here that let the air through, you know, and it's going to filter through salt and just regular table salt should do. Now the holes down here have to be smaller than the, than the grain of the size of the salt, uh, of the salt that's up here, you know, the salt crystals. Um, and so you inhale here, and you might be inhaling uh, droplets of some, somebody sneezing or coughing. Um, but also there is a small chance, I guess, that the virus can just be floating in the air. Uh, there was a study done that showed uh, that when you sneeze or cough, uh, that, that sometimes the, the droplets don't hit the ground that they actually evaporate before they hit the ground, leaving the virus to float in the middle, in, in air. Now, they don't think that this happens that much with this particular virus that we're dealing with. Uh, otherwise, it would be a lot more contagious. It is very highly contagious, but it would be a lot more contagious. But still, there might be some viruses floating without being in a droplet of water from sneezing or coughing. Um, but that's what this is also still for. So it, if the if the virus alone goes down the tube and it's inside the bubble and it goes through um, this diffuser or aerator, however you want to put it, uh, little tiny holes that break up the bubble into smaller bubbles, the chances are hopefully that the um, the virus will have touched the side of the water, getting trapped by the water, the side inside the bubble. Um, and uh, so that the only thing that's coming up here is uh, might be droplets of moisture or water that may or may not contain a virus that it hits the, the the salt and that causes it to kill you know kills the virus as the salt dries um, like I said the citrus acid might at that the citric acid may have already killed the virus by that point or this or the salt super uh, salt uh, solution, a uh, saturated solution of salt might also have killed the virus. Uh, this is where the scientists need to figure this out. Um, but like I said, I do know salt, dry salt will kill a virus uh, that has been captured, you know, that has been dropped on it in, in a drop of moisture uh, with this, with the virus on it, onto salt will kill uh, viruses. And so will citric acid. So, um, what we're going to hope for is that, you know, this mask, you know, that this, this, uh, the air comes into the mask after it goes through the filter, and now the virus is either dead or it's been damaged enough to where it, it won't infect you, you know, um, and, uh, then when you breathe out, you, it does the same exact process. You, know, you breathe out, goes down the tube, goes through the water, into the salt, 
through the salt and out into the air. Uh, like I said, hope you know. It, hopefully, that will protect other people if the person who's wearing the mask happens to have the virus, and maybe they don't know it yet. Um, so that's the basic way, you know, that I've come up with. I don't know if this will work or not. Um, that's like I said. That's why I'm trying to get the idea to the scientists, because had we had something similar developed, and we should have really had something developed, you know, not long after World War II. You know, we had the science there. Uh, you can't tell me that science hasn't been able, wouldn't have been able to come up with a filter that kills uh, viruses. Now, there's certain, and bacteria, there's certain uh, things that you'd want in long-term storage. If every person in the world or in the United States had a mask like this, you know, salt is a great option in that salt lasts forever. There's no expiration date on salt. Um, I don't know about citric acid, but you know, this could sit in a closet in a plastic bag, sealed plastic bag, and you only pull it out and do what you need to do when you get an alert saying um, a virus has been detected in your city and you must wear the, your mask outside your house and at work for the next three or four weeks. You know, that you can't go to eat inside a restaurant, but you can go get food from the restaurant and either eat it at home or eat it in your car. Um, you could still go to work wearing these masks and hopefully uh, people would be able to design masks that you could wear for long periods of time comfortably. Because um, I've parsed this out, you know, if I were to build, actually build this, you know, I, I was going to use uh, a diffuser, the type for an fish aquarium, it looks like a little stone. Um, you blow, pu put, pump the air through the stone, uh, or this, they call it a stone, um, and it's very porous and it breaks it up into small bubbles. Um, I was going to need, um, uh, a hoses and a way to connect the hoses to the cylinders and a way to connect the used cylinders or filters to each other. And by the time I parsed it out, it was about a hundred dollars. You know, that's with, um, starting with a snorkel mask. You know, taking the snorkel part off and then connecting the hoses and then having um, these filters connected to the hoses. You know, uh, I parsed it all out and it was going to be about a hundred bucks. So you can't tell me that the U.S. government can't mass produce these masks for about twenty dollars per person. There's 350 million people in the United States and times that by 20, and that's $7 billion. That's nothing. $7 billion is nothing. Um, um, you know, that's, how much does an aircraft carrier cost? You know, $30 billion, something like that. Um, so yeah, we have the money. We could have built these things. Like I said, you'd want to make sure that it can be stored for long periods of time um, and that it's issued to everybody. You know, in the United States, it's something where, like, um, you're, you're visiting from outside the country, uh, getting off the plane, they hand you a mask. I don't open this up. Don't open this mask up unless we you get instructed to do so. And when you leave, you you leave the the mask behind. But hope I mean, you leave the mask here. You know, um, but really, everybody on the planet should have a mask, and it would be cheaper for the United States to pay for poorer countries to have these masks so that we could stop pandemics before they ever become pandemics. Had we had masks like these um, uh, in China, uh, the Chinese officials could have said to the, in the city where they first discovered the virus, said, look, everybody in the city, you got to put on your mask. You're going to have to wear these your mask for three or four weeks. Um, anytime you're outside your home. And that probably, that would have stopped the, the spread of the, of the, of the, um, of the virus. You know, you still do, you'd still do social distancing and all that kind of stuff during that three or four weeks, but you could still go to work. You could still go to the movies. You could still go into your favorite restaurant, just get your food to go. Uh, you could still just eat it in your car, you know, so, um, you know, even your family, while you're in the car, you just take your masks off, you eat put your mask back on. 
uh, drive home, go into your house, take your masks off, and you're good to go. Um, no need for a vaccine, uh, although vaccines would be nice. Uh, we wouldn't need vaccines, uh, all this other stuff, you know, it, it'd be a heck of a lot cheaper. Um, and you could wipe out a virus before it ever gets out, really. You could keep the, we could have kept the people infected down to like 30 or 40 um, in China and just waited till they got better or maybe they didn't quite all live, just depends um, um, of those original, but it would be only 30 or 40 people. You know, most of them would, would have lived just fine and then we would know as soon as they got well, we would know the average time it takes for the virus uh, for somebody who's been infected um, to get over the virus so that we would know when to open up and say, yeah, you don't have to wear your masks anymore. Uh, usually I think that they say it's about two weeks um, for this particular virus. And so uh, they could have said, you know, just be on the safe side. Everybody's going to wear their masks for a month. And if we have no more new cases, this, the, 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 you know, um, if we haven't had a new case in a week, then we wait two or three weeks after that. And then everybody doesn't have to wear the masks and the virus is actually extinct at that point since it didn't reproduce and they're all dead now because they can only live outside the human body for so long. And we're good. You know, so this really was a huge oversight by not only the CDC and the federal government or the United States governments, but all governments. You can't tell me that the world couldn't have come up with a mask that uses simple ingredients that can can be stored for a long period of time and that you just add water, you know, or it could be something as simple as, you know, the salts are in there, you add a cup of water, you add, uh, take one uh, small lemon or lime and squeeze it in here, you know, or something like that. You can't tell me that we can't find a simple, a fairly simple cost-effective, um, you know, things that will kill a virus. And it's not going to, and this, if this does kill this virus, this system that I, I've created here, it should work on many other viruses as well, and maybe even bacteria, you know. And so it could be this one mask, you know, that can make it so that it works across a very wide variety. Um, you know, would this have helped with Ebola? No, because Ebola isn't spread through the air. It's not spread through coughs. It's spread through um, bodily fluid, you know, spit, blood, um, urine, uh, mucus, uh, diarrhea. You know, that's how you get Ebola is touching that stuff, not through just breathing the same air that they're breathing. Um, so... Um, so it's primarily through contact, not through not through the lungs. Although I'm sure if somebody coughed right up in the air and you went and breathed it, you could probably catch Ebola that way. But it's not that contagious, I guess, through the air like that. Um, uh, so anyway, so so this is the idea. And so if you know somebody who works for the CDC or is a scientist or a doctor or an engineer, somebody that you think would either be the right person to get this idea or um, you know somebody who would be the right person to get this idea, um, please definitely give them a link to this video. Um, and, you know, maybe they haven't thought of the salt idea or the citrus acid, citric acid um, salt combination. Maybe they're working on this right now. I don't know. Uh, maybe they're working not trying to come up with a simple solution right now, but I'm um, um, telling you the the regular masks the the N95 or whatever it is you know that's not 100% effective you know we need something that's reusable and they're disposable they're not supposed to be used over and over again and you see what happens when we don't have enough of them when you're using something that's disposable this would be something that's reusable that you can reuse day after day after day after day you know um, and yes, I would probably put a, a piece of cloth over this opening so that the sneeze and the mucus and the sneezing uh, would um, 
get caught on the cloth before it even got into the water. The more filters, the better. I'd even probably saturate the cloth um, with salt, with a super saturation of salt water, let it dry, and then cover the opening so that you have dry salt here. So that if, because um, one of the things about the N95 masks is uh, if it does stop the virus, if they, they've sneezed or coughed and, they, and it stops the virus, well, that means the front, the outside of those masks are very contaminated and touching them could, um, is how you could, you touch the mask on the outside of the mask and then you rub your eye and the next thing you know, you got it. Um, while if it's, if it's super saturated with salt, you know, where you saturate the cloth first or the front of the mask first with super saturated salt water and then let it dry, now, any viruses that land on that salt is, you know, in the drop, droplet of moisture will, um, um, will, um, uh, it will kill the virus so that it's safe to handle. And so this water, um, with a saturated with salt, if it spills a little bit, as soon as it dries, the, any virus that was on it is dead. So it's, it's self sanitizing. So anyway, so, so yeah, so if you know anybody, uh, get it into, you know, if give them a link to this video, maybe they haven't been thinking about this, you know, along this lines of, um, of coming up with a, a, a an effective, but simple filter system to, to kill the virus. So if, like I said, so this protects the person wearing it from getting the virus, and it also protects other people if somebody does is infected from spreading the virus out in the air. So awesome. Alrighty. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more videos about this on uh, this channel. Uh, maybe I will. I do kind of want to rant and rave uh, about a few other things um, uh, that have to do with the pandemic. Um, but if I were to rant, I, I already did that in another video and it was an hour and a half long and I don't want this to be an hour and a half long. So, um, anyway, uh, I hope you guys are all staying safe and, um, and I wish you guys all the best and God bless everyone. See you in the next video.